I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing good. Okay. Can Can you give me like like this is the first time we are speaking to each other. Uh, can you give me some background? And in the meanwhile, uh, Suman, can you record this session, please? I'm recording. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure, Ranil. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, okay. My name is Vamsi. I've been mm -hmm. working uh, in IT industry for over uh, 11 years. Okay. Um, I have worked, I started my career on legacy systems and uh, uh, for the past seven years I was working on uh, SAP data services. Uh, currently okay. I'm working as an SAP uh, BODS lead consultant and uh, I also work on SAP information steward. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as necessary, I do work on SAP HANA and some uh, Hadoop integration activities too. Okay. So okay. which company Coming are you my... working for? Uh, I'm working for one of the uh, uh, reputed Indian uh, IT organization. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to name it right now. Okay. Is it with uh, Madhuka you're working with or someone else? Uh, no, someone else. I work okay. uh, uh, from Hyderabad. Okay. Okay. And coming to my okay. data services experience, um, I have started working from version 3.2 onwards, uh, which is also uh, version 12.2. Uh, so I have mm -hmm. experience working in various uh, data integration projects as well as data migration projects. Mm -hmm. And for okay. the, the past couple of uh, years, I was working on uh, various uh, data quality improvement uh, aspects also. Uh, I'm closely using the information steward and the IS and data services integration facilities. Okay, okay. as of now, I am working on uh, 4.2 SP10. Okay, that's what we have right over here, 4.2. Okay. SP, SP10 or SP7 we have, I don't remember. I need uh, to check SP10 it out. is uh, a very latest one. Uh, it has mm -hmm. been a couple of uh, months, so Mm -hmm. uh, actually, day after tomorrow, we are going live. Uh, going uh, live on the production system. As of now, we have it only in Dev and ST environment. <laughs> okay. And how comfortable are you uh, in pulling the data from cloud to through the API into the, the database? Uh, cloud in the sense, uh, is it like a HANA cloud or a Google cloud well, or? It's, it's, it's basically, we have a performance system, which is a cloud-based system, okay? Okay. And uh, we want to, and they provide these files through the JSON files and all. Okay. So what our aim is to pull the data mm -hmm. via the JSON files so through the API into the system. Okay. Why are the data services tables and all like? Because at the moment, how the system is? Because I let let me give my background first. Okay. Um, we are a H, uh, like a, we are an asset management company out here in London. Okay, and okay. I work as a head of performance. Okay. I used to be in India till two thousand eight. I used to work for BlackRock. And prior okay. to that, Merrill Lynch. The, do you know BlackRock, Merrill Lynch, these companies? Or? Uh, Merrill Lynch, have I heard? have heard. Yeah, I heard it. Okay. Yeah. Have you heard about DSP, BlackRock? Uh, yeah, basically, um, there are many mutual funds from DSP, yes, BlackRock. Yes. Yeah. yes, I used to work for them till 2008. Okay. And then I moved down to London. But in, okay. in 2011, I joined Polar Capital, which is my current company. And in 2007, 16 and what we did was we wanted to automate our performance reporting process so one of my friend's friend he recommended that we should go for SAP business objects that would meet our requirement so okay. that's how he was the one who installed all these systems at our place and he okay. used to work as a contractor and he did it from India, whatever installation and all, he did it. And okay. in fact, he created those reports and WebI and 
okay. did the complete setup on data services, created those tables. So basically how we load the data at the moment is we place these, we extract the data from the cloud into okay. an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And that okay. Excel spreadsheet, what we do is we put it in a target folder and run the data services processor. So uh, what he has done, he has created those data flows on the data services for each job. Okay. And when we run those jobs, when we execute it, what it does is depending upon the file, which is kept in the target folder, it pulls and process does the processing wherein it, according to the tables that are provided, it pulls data from various sheets and places them into the database. Okay. Okay. And through the UDT at the moment, we pull the data and use it. By. And at the same time, I have started using the design studio as well. So design studio, what it does for design studio, we use IDT inf information design tool. Okay. Okay. And it puts the data through the IDT and we use the data on the design studio dashboards. So what my expectation out of this training is, hmm. we want to know how this data services work because I, I have a little bit of knowledge on how to create tables and how to run these jobs and all that. But okay. I want to have an in-depth knowledge of if anything goes wrong, how can I fix it? How can I do the troubleshooting? And okay. at the same time, I want to automate this process wherein it's manual at the moment, wherein what we do is we extract the data into an Excel spreadsheet and then load it into the data service. Instead of that, what we want is the data services, once we execute it, it should pull the data automatically through the okay. APIs. Okay. okay. And okay. Um, save it onto the database so that, that we can use it for WebI and the design studio. Okay. So, so that's, that's okay. the data migration part is very important for us. So instead of doing it manually, we want to automate it. Okay. And what sort of okay. cloud is this? Uh, what sort of cloud? That's a good question. Can you share the screen? I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show it to you on my screen what exactly I'm talking about. Then you'll have a complete idea of what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so I'm is already it sharing the screen. Can you, uh, let me make you the presenter. Okay, please. Thank you. What should I do now? Can you see my screen? How can I? Uh, can I... No. Okay, just hold on. Audio. It's not allowing me to do. How can I do that? How do I share my screen? Because, yeah, now I can. Okay. Okay, share. Can you see? Uh, yes, I can see. My screen. Yeah, I can see. Okay. So this is the performance system. Okay. So okay. all this data that we have. Okay. So this would be pulled. Okay. At the moment, all this data is being pulled into the Excel spreadsheet and from the Excel spreadsheet, we uh, execute the job and the data is loaded into various tables of the database. So we want to cut short that manual process of extracting the data into an Excel and then moving it through the ETL. Okay. Okay, so this particular data that you can see, hang on. I'll just use the signed off data. This particular data, you know, like it's got multiple, a 
amount of data. So what happens is when you pull it up, it gets into an Excel spreadsheet. I'll show you the Excel spreadsheet as well. Okay, so you have logged into this particular application and from here you yes. are extracting to Excel sheet. Yes, precisely. And what is this application? Does it run on any database or any? Yes, it runs on the database. So this one, we are, we are, it's, a, it's a cloud based system. Okay, okay. This particular thing is a cloud based system belongs to it, a company, a vendor called Stackpro. Stackpro, okay. okay. So Stackpro, and we pull the data via this cloud bit system into uh, our database. So if you go to see, this is the data that we pull, you know, and again, there are multiple tabs if you go to see. Okay. It's a never ending tab, you know, right? This much of data, we have to do it around about 30 funds. And okay. for different time periods like CMTD, QTD, YTD, one year, and it would go on, you know, three years, five years since inception. So we need to figure out a way wherein we can automate this process using data services. Because if we can get the data directly into the data services through the API, then most of our issues will be resolved. Yeah, so for that API, uh, I want to know uh, what I have seen now is the web interface of your system, right? Yes. So yes. I want to know what sort of system is this and if that API is supported, uh, if it doesn't, uh, we need to see if we can create any alternative data store for that. Mm -hmm. Or another option might be um, if the data lies uh, in the tables, the underlying tables, mm -hmm. uh, that can be exposed. But as an asset management company, I'm not sure if that will be allowed or not. I exposing the database. Okay, because I don't want to expose anything. See. Yeah. I'll, I'll forward you this email, okay? okay? This is for the developer sites. So these are the resources. So basically all other output examples, it has got it in JSN, JSON and exam, uh, XML. Okay, okay, so. yeah, yeah. This is what I was looking for. I believe this is sort of a web service call. Yes. So okay. what I'll do is I, I can forward this to you. So you can have okay. a look. Can I have your email ID? Um, yeah, let me ping you. Okay. You can go through this and then you can suggest what would be the best way going forward. Okay. Have you sent? Mm, yeah, I did ping you or chat. Uh, I didn't get any message. Um, okay. Let me try again. Oh, okay. Not yet. Yeah, I see two instances of your name. So maybe I have sent to the inactive one. Uh, maybe. Have you received it now? Yeah. No. Anyway, I've got this on my phone now already. Dot Wamsi. Wamsi is such a common name in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, yes. Reddy.wamsi at yeah. yahoo.com. Okay. So, okay, I have forwarded that. So just have a okay. look. And then 
we can take it forward. So in the meanwhile, you can start your training, but that's where we need to end. Like when you need to teach me how to pull the data directly through this particular website. Okay. Into my database. Okay. 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 So will you be able to do it? Uh, I'm hoping so. I see a web service call there, right? So we can create a web service based yes. data store. Um, mm -hmm. But that web service call will be restricted, right? Do we have any user ID and uh, password? Uh, for this. Or, or I'll do one thing. Um, let me go through that email first, uh, gather the details. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in the mm -hmm. next session, we will discuss on that. Okay. okay? Uh, if possible, we can try creating that connection in the system directly in the next session. Okay. So okay. whatever the details I need, I will ask you in the session itself. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Should I give you back the control? Uh, yes. Yes, please. Okay. Make presenter. Yes. Okay. It's with you now. Okay. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Yeah, um, coming to the uh, data services introduction part. Uh, well, these are the topics that I have planned to cover in today's session. Mm, I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, yeah. Okay, now uh, in simple terms, in simple terms, we can call SAP data services as an ETL tool, which can extract, transform, and load data virtually from any system to any target system. Uh, why I'm using the word virtual here is, um, for example, we have just seen your screen. Directly connecting to that screen might not be possible, yet you have figured out a way to extract to an Excel sheet and then load it to the target that you need. Okay, so that's the reason I have used that term. So almost from any system, there will be one or the other way to load data from uh, the application system to a target table. Okay, then actually using ETL, the term ETL tool for SAP data services, I feel it uh, a little degrading because the capabilities it has are much more than an ETL system. Okay, so before I discuss the entire capabilities of the data services, I would like to give an introduction uh, about this version history, how the tool started and other things. So I heard that uh, you already have some experience with this business objects reporting from Madhukar. Uh, so you, you yes. might know the business objects company. Yeah, so yes, even yes. before uh, business objects, this product started at a company called Actavis. So mm -hmm. the initial days, uh, it was like the Bob J part, which was for reporting. Uh, whereas this BODI, they used to call it as business objects data integrator part. So it mm -hmm. was for the data integration, pulling the data from any system to wherever uh, required. Then after SAP has acquired, they renamed it as a data services tool, SAP data services tool. And uh, they added a lot more functionality to the tool. Okay, uh, the main functionality they have added is a tighter integration with the SAP products. Uh, SAP being the uh, uh, market dominant ERP player, uh, many large organizations implement SAP for their uh, as their ERP tool. So all the data, the sales data, FI data generated uh, can be loaded to any target system using data services. Okay, so as is the case with many business object tools, the data services is also very uh, user friendly. I would say it is very developer friendly, very easy to understand interface. Uh, the transformations are easy to understand. We will, by looking at the overall data flow, we will come to know what is actually being done. Okay, um, the current version, um, as we discussed earlier, 4.2 SP10. Okay, and from 4.x version onwards, uh, uh, we have a lot of improvements. Uh, the current uh, SP10 version uh, 
if I want to highlight the future, I would say that uh, it has got a very good integration capabilities with big data and Hadoop system. So as you might have heard that uh, the big data is now changing the way uh, data is being processed. We are getting a lot of uh, unstructured data uh, generated daily over the internet or any other systems. Okay, so data services is uh, improving the integration uh, between the other systems with the Hadoop part also. Okay, so any questions so far on the uh, history part or anything? No, 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 you can carry on. Okay, now coming to the capabilities of this tool. Uh, the very first one is uh, more likely I would call it as ETL capability. We can integrate data from an ERP system or an OLTP system and bring it to an OLAP system. And while bringing the data, I can do the transformation, data transformation also as per the business requirements. Okay, so it has got this ETL um, capability. It can extract from almost any source. Uh, let it be a database. Uh, let it be an SAP application. Uh, let it be a web service call uh, and other flat file formats, Excel sheets, JSON files, XML files, and then um, uh, Hadoop HDFS files. Okay, so from almost. So can it, can it uh, from, do calculations and all? Uh, yes, yes, it can. So basically, yeah, if, if I give, give hmm. yeah, please go two ahead. columns, yeah. okay, with some figures, and if I want okay. to put in some equation in the third column, yeah. Okay. Give a formula saying that okay, I want to use these two columns in this particular fashion, and the results should come in the third column. Will the system be able to do that? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it can do that. So, and which is the best way to do it on the data services, or to do it on the front end on Webi by creating a variable out there? Um. A front front end in the sense the report front end or the um, yes the, ERP the report system. front end. Uh, report I would front say end. we can pre-generate and save it so that we can save time during the report generation. Absolutely, that is what I wanted. You know, like I want to do it at the back end at the data services level so that yes. I don't have to do anything at the front end. Yes. So yeah, it's possible, we can, right? Yeah, it is possible. Um, it has a capability. Uh, I would say like it has the transformations that can uh, uh, build the slowly changing dimensions, uh, which are the core part for reporting. OK, for example, uh, I want to have that transactional history data. Or the mm -hmm. slow, I want to implement a slowly changing dimension for the uh, changing master data over a period of time. So it has got some transformations like uh, uh, table comparison, history preserving, map transfer. So with the help of these, I can generate the this star schema on my target database, okay, which mm -hmm. will serve the reporting purpose well. And as we just discussed, we can pre-calculate the values and save them in database. So during the report generation time, we can simply pull those values from the database and display it. Okay. 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 So it and it also supports most of the mathematical functions and the string handling functions, uh, date handling functions. So all these things will help us to pre-generate the data needed for a report. Okay. Then the data migration part. Uh, considering your scenario, uh, data migration, uh, yours is mostly uh, like in data integration and data processing scenario. Data migration mm -hmm. is now playing a major role uh, because uh, many organizations who started their IT landscape with mainframe systems or the other legacy systems, uh, they're trying to move to uh, advanced GUI mm -hmm. and uh, frameworks. Okay, mm -hmm. for some of them, they want to move to, to the SR, SAP ERP systems or the SAP HANA systems. Some they mm -hmm. might want to go for Oracle ERP. So here, uh, the data migration plays a crucial role. From their legacy system, they want their existing business data to be migrated to the new operational system. Okay, so for that purpose, 
we might have to do a lot of data transformations. Um, uh, for example, the legacy system uh, for country code, it might have only two characters. For example, a country like US, it might accept only two characters. Whereas in SAP, it is mandate, it might be mandatory to have a three character code. Okay, so we need to do this transformation while we migrate the data. Similarly, uh, there will be some mandatory columns in the target system to be filled, which might not be available sometimes or which might be in a different format. Okay, so we uh, need to consider all these scenarios uh, and sometimes we need to consider the data quality also. We may have to assess the data quality in legacy system and then load into the target. So for this purpose, um, we would guess um, like SAP provides some pre-built data services code. Okay, they, they have some uh, pre-built jobs. Okay, uh, we can, uh, once we have the data service license, uh, we can uh, extract the, that code files from SAP and use it in our data migration process so that they will save a lot of development effort for us. Okay, but okay. but I would say most of the migration packages that SAP has built are to migrate from any system to SAP targets. Okay, from almost from okay. any system to any SAP target. Okay. Okay. So this is the data migration part, and as of now, uh, the current market trend, um, we have many migration projects running on running using the uh, data services tool especially wherever we have uh, SAP landscape. Uh, data services is the uh, their de facto tool for uh, data migration. Okay. Okay, then um, coming, okay, these two are the data processing, integration and migration features. Uh, coming to the data profiling part, uh, data profiling is something where we can um, identify the limitations of our data. We can we can look at our data in various dimensions. Um, for example, I have a customer database and uh, I have a column called uh, um, street name, street name of the, uh, like let us say the customer address. So out of thousand records, uh, let me say 800 of them have a null values in it. That means my customer address data is not complete. Okay, 80% of the data is empty, I would say. Okay, so data profiling will help us identify um, uh, uh, such uh, data, uh, such defects within the data. Okay, the missing data uh, or uh, suppose if I want to uh, check for a particular name pattern, uh, how many customers have a particular name pattern, then I can also identify it using profiling. So the pro data services tool has an inbuilt uh, facility profile the data okay it can give us uh, uh, a view of our data in various dimensions that will help uh, the data stewards uh, to analyze the quality of data okay so many organizations now uh, while moving to from legacy to sap they generally start with the data profiling part okay they will come to know um, what will be their uh, existing data quality score Okay, based on that, um, uh, they will uh, uh, invest on cleaning that data. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, once the data profiling is done, we have identified the bad data or problematic data or particular patterns. So if we want to fix that, we can perform the data cleansing part. Okay. So data cleansing, um, if I say like it's a manual cleansing, for example, whenever I have uh, uh, a null value in a var care column, I want to replace it with a blank. Uh, that's one sort of ma manual cleansing thing. The second part is uh, whenever nulls are there, I want to report it back to the business. Okay, I want to fill some okay. error table uh, on which the business will work and get me back the results. That one part. So um, one thing, the quick yeah. one. If, for yeah. example, if I pull the data, Hmm. Uh, into the Excel spread. Like at the moment, what's happening is how it works. Hmm. We pull hmm. the data into the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. And sometimes, wherever there is no data, 
what it does is uh, it reflects with any any okay like any any okay so what we do is we replace those NAs with zeros okay so can we do it on this you know like the moment it sees any any it replaces it with the zero so that's um, what data yeah, plans yeah, yeah, right? yeah within our job uh, we will build a transformation like if that mm -hmm. particular value is equal to NA uh, replace it with zero perfect hmm. So we have that yeah, because there is a lot of there are a lot of things like these small small things which yeah. I need to fit in before I yeah. create a job to pull the data and uh, move it to the database. So so whatever goes yeah. into the database should be the clean data. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So whatever scrubbing or cleaning that needs to be done on the data, it should be taken care at the data services level. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Coming to the technical terms, there's a transformation called validation transform within data services. Uh, okay. There I can uh, build some business rules. Okay. Uh, for example, if a column has okay. an A value, then either report that this mm -hmm. is a bad column, or if it is NA, replace it with a particular value. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, another option might be replace it with a particular value and pass it to the target, or reject mm -hmm. that particular record and send it back to uh, the for the business review or the data steward review we can we can okay. send it in an error file or we can fill an error table or we can uh, um, drop an email uh, with that error data attachment saying that uh, boss this uh, we tried loading this particular data and we have errors recorded in the attached records so that that facility okay. is also possible and also, like for example, if there is a list of mm. stocks, okay, with okay. Uh, contribution results in column B, okay, column A has the okay. name of the stocks, and column B has mm. a list of uh, the contribution, the returns that they have generated, okay, okay. and they are in whatever format, you know, like uh, it can be ascending, descending, or randomly uh, populated. So yep. we, can we create a rule stating that okay, those numbers, that particular data that has come in, okay, and it needs to rank and pick up the top five in the bottom five. Is it possible? Um, yes, it is. It is possible. So we, we want okay. to. So we are example, ranking the top. Uh, let me make it uh, very clear. If there are yeah. hundred stocks. Okay. okay with 100 okay. different returns okay okay and mm -hmm. they are not in an ascending or descending order they are randomly sorted out according to okay. the name okay so okay. what I want is you know like mm -hmm. when the table when the data is pulled in into the mm -hmm. data services the data yeah. services we need to create a rule wherein it will mm -hmm. pick up the top five and the bottom five mm -hmm. create a table of that and store it onto the database Mm, yes, it is possible. Okay, now within data services, um, yes, I can I can perform sorting as needed, without mm -hmm. uh, uh, storing the entire data in a table. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, one okay. one solution, one quick solution I can directly give for this is, uh, I will uh, uh, sort this set of data first on ascend, um, descending order, which will give me okay. my the first five. Once I sort mm -hmm. in descending order, I will rank mm -hmm. them. Okay, and I will okay. filter out only for the first five ranks. Okay, then in parallel, okay. I will send the same set of data. Okay, we can send the same set of data to a different flow, sort in ascending order, and rank mm -hmm. the five again. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, okay. I'll filter out in the next stage. I get the first, uh, the five in descending and the five in ascending. Merge them and load it mm -hmm. into a table. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. This is what I wanted as well, you know, because there are so many small, small things, Wamsi, that, yeah. you know, like when I... we do a lot of manual stuff and okay. see, it's it's not a rocket science, but yeah. small, small things make it a big problem for us, you know, like, so for one, one, one data sheet, like for one spreadsheet, we spend at least half an hour trying to clean, do the sorting and all those things, you know, like that. <laughs> that really drives us crazy when you're doing it for 
2045. Yeah. So yeah, sure. We can automate many such scenarios using um, BBDS jobs. Okay. Okay. One thing. Can you can you just excuse me for two minutes? I'll be back. Yeah. Sure. No issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yes, Fonsi. Um, yeah, yes, Anil. Yeah, yes, sorry, Anil. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, I can very much. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, coming to the data governance part, um, okay. I would say um, data services alone cannot do the entire data governance, uh, but there's one more uh, complementary tool from SAP called Information Steward. Okay. Uh, okay, using information steward, um, we can uh, we give the quality score to uh, data. Out of out of 10, I can say, uh, like if these many business rules were satisfied, my data quality score is 95%. So that will give an insight to the business stewards uh, on how good their uh, data quality is. Okay, and okay. another part is uh, uh, the metadata handling. So within data services, we can pull some metadata reports. Uh, like for example, if I change a particular column in a table, what, where all it will affect, uh, okay? If I have some 10 jobs and my uh, particular database table is being used at multiple places. So I can immediately pull out a report on where all this table is being used. If I change a particular column, let me say if I change a data type or I increase the size, I, I can immediately come to know uh, what are all the objects that will be impacted so that I can uh, fix them whenever needed. Okay, the metadata reporting feature is also uh, provided by data services. 
Okay. Okay. So these are the overall capabilities of uh, uh, data services. So SAP is now providing this tool under their package, um, Enterprise Information Management. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it's just not an ETL tool. So it can take care of most of the data needs within an enterprise. Okay. Okay. And uh, um, this is not a data visualization tool. Uh, we, we can uh, look at the intermediate records, records within a table. Uh, but unlike uh, our Webby report or Crystal report, uh, it doesn't provide any um, data visualization facilities. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now, uh, moving to the architecture. Uh, before we look at the architecture, uh, we will look at the two terms: IPS, which is Information Platform Services, and the other one is Business Objects Enterprise. OK, so earlier uh, SAP was giving uh, both this uh, business object intelligence uh, tools, whatever the web reports or others and data services under this uh, business objects enterprise package. OK, um, so once we install it, we will have that CMC where uh, the user authentication or uh, security will be configured uh, both for uh, our reporting purpose as well as data services purpose. OK, so from 4.x onwards, they introduce the information platform services tool. OK, I can call it as a subset of BOE, which has all the features to take care of data services, security, authentication, or server related maintenance, all that stuff. OK, so for installing uh, data services, we now generally start with uh, information platform services installation. Okay, earlier it okay. used to be the overall uh, business intelligence tool. Okay. okay, so now you don't have to install the whole system. You can just yes. install the IPS and then move on to the uh, uh, to the data services, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you okay. can start with IPS, then with the data services installation. Okay, now coming to the um, high level architecture. Um, I hope you can see this PPT. Yes, yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's start with the user interfaces. Okay. Uh, the CMC is the one that uh, uh, you might be much familiar with. Okay. Uh, it's the same um, management. The central management console is same for uh, uh, both this uh, uh, our business objects reporting and data services and also for information steward in case if we install it okay okay even what is even information steward uh yeah i'll tell you uh, information steward is a data governance tool it, it complements data services uh in information steward uh, what i can do is i can build my business rules okay and for every rule that i build i can assign a particular score OK, so for, for example, on customer master data, I have run around 10 business rules. Uh, OK, uh, each rule will result me uh, a pass or a failure scenario. Based on that, we can calculate the data score. OK, uh, for example, uh, out of 1000 customer records, um, I do not have four telephone numbers for 100 records. OK, so there my score is nine out of 10. OK, since a telephone number is mandatory, I would call it as even though uh, the score is nine out of 10, I can set my threshold that uh, the, the, the data quality is not up to the mark. OK. okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, it can also do the profiling, a full fledged profiling. Uh, data services has a limited profiling capabilities, whereas IS can do. Uh, a full-fledged profiling, okay? Uh, sometime uh, okay. during our sessions, um, I can share that uh, IS screen for you so that it will be, uh, we can have a clear picture, okay? Um, I don't think uh, we have it here on this uh, system, uh, but I will share it from a different system. Okay, okay? yeah. And uh, uh, coming to this BODS designer, 
uh, this is where we log in and uh, uh, we develop our code or we create connections to external system um, uh, between uh, data services and the external system and uh, this is the tool that we use most of time as a bvds developer okay and the management yeah, console that's that's what we use yes <laughs> management console is to um, uh, do certain administrative activities uh, we can trigger the jobs we can create job schedules we can pull some uh, uh, execution statistics Okay, for example, I have run 20 load, uh, 20 jobs to load uh, 20 different tables. I can go to my mm -hmm. job execution history and pull out a report. Okay, on each, how much time each uh, table load has uh, took. Okay, when it has started, when it has ended, and what's the time it has taken. Okay, all that reports can be pulled. In addition, we can also pull the uh, metadata reports, uh, the data uh, impact and lineage analysis reports. Okay, and we can create few RFC connections also uh, to connect to the SAP systems and we can do a uh, code promotion also using the management console. Okay. Okay, so we will we will explore all the features in detail when we discuss um, these uh, tools one by one. Okay, then coming to the next uh, the underlying uh, database layer. Okay. Uh, the CMS uh, repository is the one. Uh, this is the installation repository. While installing IPS, uh, we will create one, uh, uh, any SQL server database or an Oracle database um, or SQL anywhere database where it will create a, a set of system tables uh, which will store the um, uh, CMC related uh, metadata. Okay. Okay. Then information steward repository comes into picture when we install the information steward. Uh, all the profiling results and other metadata will be saved within this. Now coming to our important part, the BODS repositories. Uh, here we have a different, uh, uh, three different types of repositories. Okay, a local uh, repository is the one where we keep working most of the time. Okay, whatever we do in the BBDS designer. Suppose if I have created a job and I have clicked on the save button. Okay, the relevant metadata gets saved in my local repository tables. Okay, so we will once we log into the system, uh, I will show you where we can identify the local repository name. And uh, uh, we can also see what exactly constitutes a local repository. Okay, it will be a set of some uh, uh, a few hundred uh, um, system tables and also views okay which save the metadata okay when I say metadata anything any object that I create using the BODS designer uh, any uh, table that I import it into my designer or any Excel format that I import into my designer all these things get saved in the local repository tables okay uh, okay. Any any questions on that, Ani? No, like like uh, see, I'm I'm I have a little bit knowledge on this, you know, like on the CMC because okay. I've been working on this since last more than one year now. So oh, okay. regarding the BODS, all these things, you know, like I have myself created these uh, some data flows, some okay, jobs, okay. and executed some jobs. So I do have a little. Bit of knowledge on that I am not saying that I'm very good okay. at it but mm -hmm. whatever you are explaining I'm able to connect okay okay so okay. Okay. Uh, for the time being I don't have any questions you can carry on okay so okay. my my, my uh, colleague Karen mm -hmm. she might when she goes through the videos when she comes okay. back okay so she okay. might contact you if she has any issues or any doubts about the systems and all that. So at that yeah. point, if you can just explain it to her in detail, that would be ideal. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Okay. Sure, okay, yeah. Now, moving to this central repository. Um, this is more like a uh, code repository. We can do the version management of the code that we develop. 
uh, we can uh, promote it to a uh, central repo and uh, do the version management there. I mean, we don't do it manually. It can automatically take care of that uh, version management. Uh, but mostly we use the central repository uh, as a, uh, a secure uh, repository to save our uh, developer code. Then profiler repository, uh, as we discussed earlier, BODS also has some profiling capabilities. So if we want to enable them, we first need to configure a profiler repository and then all of our profiling, profiling results get saved in this uh, repository. Okay, so all these repositories are nothing but a set of system tables that will be created uh, while the repository is being uh, uh, created. Okay. okay, now coming to the uh, underlying layer, uh, these are the components that actually execute the jobs. Okay, a job server is the one uh, that reads the metadata stored in repositories and it will trigger the job execution. Okay, and access server is the one that is uh, needed when we have a real time job. Uh, a real time job is like a, uh, a request response model. Okay, uh, for example, we can build a data services job, um, a data services real time job, uh, which can receive input from uh, some web page. Then it can read that values, uh, query the database using the values, get the response, and send it back to the web page. So that's the real time. Um, part of uh, data services okay now address server is something uh, where we uh, do the data quality part uh, in data services we have multiple transformations to improve uh, data quality uh, that can be like uh, organizational data or uh, address data okay so scp provides us with some dictionary files um, you know, for example uh, I have a customer table. Uh, the customer resides in US. He has entered some street name as ABC, uh, some city, and he has entered a PIN code. Okay. So with this help of dictionaries, we can validate if that street name really uh, belongs to that particular city, and will that is that PIN code matching with that city? Okay. So SAP. Um, gets these dictionaries from various agencies like uh, US Postal Services and other agencies. And with help of that, uh, we can validate the data also. Okay, it's, it's just not a, a simple verification. For example, uh, I have a PIN code, uh, ensuring that it is numeric and it is of length five is a verification. But is it really a valid PIN code? That I can do it with the help of dictionaries. Okay, so generally, I mean, uh, uh, the implementation scenarios for this uh, address validation are less, uh, but along with the data migration projects, uh, the requirement is also um, growing now. I mean, compared to some three, four years back, uh, I can see now some good number of implementations for these uh, uh, address validations and dictionary files. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, this is the overall architecture. Um, now coming to the tools. Uh, yeah, you might be already familiar with uh, what we are using uh, for the data services development, uh, but I would like to just give a, a walkthrough of all these things. Okay. Yeah, the first one, as we know, is the designer. Uh, which we use for our daily activities, code development and everything. Uh, the local selector uh, is for the uh, language dependent installations. Okay, uh, we generally do rarely use it. Uh, once installed, we will have that uh, our uh, uh, country specific local and generally we don't uh, go for any changes. Management console is the web based application that you might be using already. Then mm -hmm. repository manager is the one. Um, it can help us to create uh, the data services repositories. Let it be local, central, or profiler. Anything we can create using the repository manager. Okay, and uh, server manager is the one where we can uh, create these job servers and job server groups. Uh, we can uh, assign uh, repositories to a job server. 
okay so we will uh, okay and what yeah. about the backups like for example at the end of the day if i want to automatically i need to write a job wherein it will create a backup and mm -hmm. save it in a target folder wherein my company can just pick that folder and okay. uh, back it up um, so is backup of any file data or uh... or the data that we have it on the database backup of the database um backup of the database generally we use the database specific scripts for example if our installation is on oracle uh, we use the yeah. oracle uh, data backup tools so we our installation would be on sql database yeah yeah so we we generally go for the uh, sql relevant uh, database backup uh, scenarios so it will automatically at that particular hour it should run that job, create a backup yeah. for file, and save yeah. it into a target folder wherein my company can create a job at their end. Wherein what they do is because okay. our database is different from the company's database at the moment. Okay. Like I have a separate SAP database, which they haven't okay. merged it with the company database. So what they need to do is they need to pick up this saved file that mm. we do the backup the backup file and mm. push it onto the regular file regular space where the data is saved so that is something we need to uh, do a job you know create a job wherein it will automatically take a backup um and the, are you getting i mean can process? that backup file be any um, csv file or any delimited file yes yes anything okay. you know the see it should be in a format wherein if something crashes down we should be mm -hmm. able to get it back yeah so here we um, there are two scenarios one is mm -hmm. um, our application something happens to our installation and it crashes okay mm -hmm. so in that You're case talking about huh? the designer tool yeah, yes designer or let us say um, uh, for example, a particular repository has got corrupted today, okay. a developer repository. So mm -hmm. in that case, he will lose the code, objects, whatever he has. So generally, yes. these ha scenarios will be handled like uh, there will be a weekly backup. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. that backup will be generally uh, a database backup. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we want a file, uh, suppose if we want to take a code level backup, yes, we can write a job uh, where uh, which can be scheduled to run every week and uh, mm -hmm. save the ATL copy of the code in some safe location. Okay, yes. whatever is present in the repository. Mm -hmm. but so what that, all it will include? Um, if I do a, a repository level backup, it will include everything, all the repository objects. Okay. Okay. And it will it include the data on the database as well? No, no, it doesn't. Okay. okay. It doesn't. This backup I'm talking is only the metadata backup. Our okay. code or our connections, uh, our file formats, all these things. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Database hmm. backup is again uh, a database level uh, uh, concept. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, generally, uh, our installation database will be one, and the, our actual mm -hmm. business data will reside in another uh, database server, right? So yeah, just hold on, just hold on. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, I'll I'll have a look at it today. Thank you. Okay. By the way, I got that email from. Oh. Yeah, I have opened the account, so you can just push the cash. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, Neil. no issues. Yeah. So generally, our installation will be on one database and um, uh, business data resides in another database. So okay. depending on the type of database, uh, on the database itself, we can schedule the scripts. Okay, so they will be taking the backup at regular intervals. Uh, it can be both okay. for our installation or for the actual business data also. Okay, okay? Yeah. but that's that's what I wanted data, to know. Yeah, yeah. Backing up business data using uh, data services, it might not make much sense. 
okay mm -hmm. uh, because uh, database might include that thousand two thousand tables also right sometimes so it's mm -hmm. good to have an overall database backup for that okay, okay. and for for example uh, using data services uh, let me say if my table is daily drop and uh, load table uh, in that cases uh, the previous data days data we can move it to some history table or an archival uh, file or something like that Th that is possible that's another uh, uh, a backup scenario. Okay. Okay. Also, uh, another archival scenario. For example, we are reading from Excel files here, right? So once we read from Excel, we can move them to a different archive folder. Okay. And we can also write a job to maintain that archive for around 90 days or 120 days like that. So we can automatically delete any files older than 90 or 120 days. Or, or any number of days which can which we can configure so that's another uh, backup scenario okay. for the files so um, when we get the data through the api i hope mm -hmm. we're going to get it through the flat files um when we get the uh, data through api we don't need an intermediate mm -hmm. flat file okay uh, it will be okay. it should be uh, in a in an xml structure uh, from where we can directly load okay. into a table, okay, within the job itself. Okay, so that's Once what I, they have mentioned, right? JSON file or XML file. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Makes sense. Okay, hmm. so that's the thing. And yeah, tools-wise, we are done with most of them. Uh, probably in the next session, we will start with the designer. And we will try to explore that scenario, whatever uh, uh, you have sent me in the email. Okay. Okay. So hopefully okay. that will be uh, more interesting. Okay. So when are we going to have the next session? Can we have one session tomorrow? Um, I am. I'm fine. Uh, I need to check with uh, uh, Madhuka. Suman. Madhuka. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because what I'm trying to aim is because uh, I have got next two weeks i can okay if i can finish this off okay mm -hmm. then because every month starting two weeks are quite busy for us oh okay okay so i don't want any overlap or any gaps in between you know like if we can just finish it off in the next couple of weeks that okay. would be ideal i'm happy to do it on sunday as well okay yeah sure okay so yeah, sure. If we can do one hour tomorrow, okay. So uh, it would be great, you know. So um, it would really yeah, yeah sure, Anil. Um, should not be a so problem. So somewhere in the somewhere in the afternoon for your time, like eleven o'clock. Your time. Uh, uh sorry, eleven o'clock means four thirty your time. Eleven o'clock my time. Okay. Is it possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, four p.m. our time. Yes, I can. Yeah, just just for an hour, so that we can okay. just cover the cover as much as possible in the next fourteen days. If it doesn't get completed, mm -hmm. then we don't have any option than giving it a gap. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. Yeah. So so far, whatever you thought makes sense for me. Okay. So the questions sure. that I had, the issues that I had, that got the ranking and the backup and cleaning all those things you know like if you can cover mm. that would be ideal you know that's what we usually do and okay it should be okay okay yeah yeah sure and okay. then um so we'll meet uh, tomorrow uh at 4 p.m our time right tomorrow four o'clock your time okay okay perfect okay. Next yeah, I'll drop a message to okay, Madhukar so, to schedule the meeting. Yeah, the same time. Okay, and at the same time, if you can go through that email that I have sent. Yeah. Okay, so then if you want to go through further documentation and all, like I can, we can log in tomorrow if the credentials are needed to hmm. access the data, then we can do that as well. So that shouldn't be a yeah, problem. Yeah. Sure, I'll I'll go through the email. Um, mm -hmm. I will see whatever I can do. I will definitely uh, we can definitely work on it. 
Thank Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vamsi. Yeah. Thanks, Anil. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you. Bye. Thanks, Anil. Thanks, yeah, thanks so much. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Bye bye.